Hi. In this tutorial, we'll be learning about three popular portfolio performance measures, which are Sharp Ratio, Trainer Ratio, and Jensen's Alpha. There are thumbnails in the video description, so if you would like to jump ahead to a particular measure, feel free to do so. Let's get started with the Sharp Ratio. And to understand that, oops, sorry, jump too much ahead. And to understand that, I would like to first draw a graph where we have, let's say, the realized average return on the uh, vertical axis. So this is our return measure. And we have volatility of returns or the standard deviation of returns on the horizontal axis. So this is our measure of risk. So let's say we have a single risk asset here. So this could be a single stock, or it could be a mutual fund, or any other risk asset. And let's say we have the risk-free rate of return here. Why this is risk-free? Because it has zero volatility. Typically, this would we would proxy this with yields on government bonds, assuming that they are uh, safe from default. Now, I would like to get an understanding of the performance of this particular fund. So let's call this A or stock. One way to do that is really to join these two assets uh, with a line. And you can think of this as the combinations of the risk-free asset and this uh, stock A. Okay, And to look at the slope of this line, and you will see why the slope is interesting. So the slope of this line will essentially depend on the realized return of this stock, okay? So to measure the slope, I get the vertical distance, which is the return on the asset minus the risk-free rate and divided by the horizontal distance, which is the volatility of the asset minus the volatility of the risk-free rate, which is zero. So the slope of this line is Ra minus Rf divided by sigma A. And this is what we call as the sharp ratio of this stock. Now, how do we interpret this? So for example, is it good to be good for this to be a high number or low number? Well, you would like that to be a high number because this is essentially a reward to risk ratio. Okay, so sharp ratio is a re reward to risk ratio. In the num numerator, we have the reward, which is the excess return of the stock, right? So it is the return above the risk free rate, right? So if the risk free rate is 5%, if this is 8%, so the stock is generating an additional return of 3% above the risk free rate, right? And in the denominator, we have the risk measure, which is the standard deviation of the returns, okay? So the higher the sharp ratio, the better, because the amount of reward per unit of risk is higher, okay? So we would like this to be a big figure. Just to illustrate this with a, a practical example, so let's say we have a stock that generates the return of 14.8%, and the standard deviation of the returns was 32.6%, and the risk-free rate is 2.5%. So let's calculate the sharp ratio of this um, stock. So in the numerator, we start with the stock's return. We subtract the risk-free rate, and we divide that by uh, the volatility of the returns, which is 32%. 0.6%. If you go to our website and you'll find the link in the video description, we actually have a nice online sharp ratio calculator which automatically does this for you. So we enter the return, the volatility, and the risk free rate, and the result here is 0 0.377, which is the sharp ratio of this fund, or sorry, of this stock. And this is a nice uh, interactive calculator. So actually, you will see some arrows up and down. So you can actually quick change the numbers and dynamically see how the sharp ratio would change as well. So feel free to check that out. OK, let's move on to our 
Um, oh, sorry, before moving to our next measure, here's a bit of homework for you, an exercise, okay? So um, again, you can find the solution uh, to this exercise in the video description. It is essentially the same link as where we have the sharp ratio calculator. So you can test your knowledge and see whether you, you've got the uh, correct answer here. Okay. Now let's move on to our second um, uh, performance measure, which is trainer ratio. Like sharp ratio, a trainer ratio is a reward to risk ratio. And it is very similar in idea. So again, we have, let's say, the realized return over here. And again, we need a measure of risk. But now I'm not going to put standard deviation of returns here. Instead, I will put beta, right? While standard deviation captures total risk, beta captures systematic risk. Yes. So again, let's say we have a fund over here. Let's call it A. And we have risk free rate over here. We will connect these two lines. So this is the return, the, real, the realized return of our stock and the beat of our stock. Now the trainer ratio will be again the vertical distance, which is the excess return of the stock, divided, because this is zero, divided by the beat of the stock. Risk-free asset will have a beat of zero. Okay, So the trainer ratio for stock A is the excess return, so the return above the risk-free rate, divided by the beat of the stock. Again, this is reward divided by risk. But now we are talking about excess return per unit of systematic risk instead of total risk, which was the case with sharp ratio. Okay? And by the way, I'm demonstrating this in terms of realized or historical returns because you know we are thinking about performance evaluation, so things that happened in the past. But you can also think of these ratios in expected return terms as well, then they would be forward looking, right? So you, you could as well write this as the expected return minus the risk free rate divided by beta. So then you would get the expected trainer ratio. But for that, you need to have an estimate of the expected returns. Okay? All right, let's do a simple example to illustrate this as well. So we got the same stock as in the previous example, so still yields 14.8%, and the risk-free rate is still 2.5%. And again, I need to divide it by a measure of risk, but this time I'm going to divide it by the Stokes beta, which is given as 1.35%. Similarly, we have also a trainer ratio calculator on our website, so you can check that out as well. Again, uh, the link is in the video description. So if you do this, you get the answer as 9.1%. So uh, basically, this stock is generating 9% return per unit of systematic risk, right? And remember, beta captures sensitivity to market movements, and market represents the systematic risk, essentially. So sometimes people would also call that market risk. So it is the same thing. So the market portfolio has a beta of one. So um, so this has a bit slightly higher beta, which means that it is sensitive to market movements. And here is, again, a second exercise for you to check your understanding. And the solution, uh, in, as in previous cases, is in the video description. And again, it's on the same page as the uh, trainer ratio calculator. Our final measure in this tutorial will be Jensen's alpha. Now, this will be slightly different than sharp ratio and trainer ratio. So to explain that, again, I'm going to draw the same graph. Again, let's say I have the realized return on the vertical axis, and I will use beta as my measure of risk. Okay, so we had our stock over here, and we had the risk-free rate 
over here. Okay. So this is the recipe rate of return. And the trainer ratio was essentially the slope of this line, right? So the trainer ratio for the stock is the slope of this line. And like sharp ratio, we want that to be as high as possible. Now, what is the Janssen's alpha? Janssen's alpha actually captures something else. So instead of focusing on the slope, it focuses on the vertical distance, what's called the security market line. And to draw the security market line, we need to know the position of the, oops, sorry, of the market portfolio. So let's say market portfolio is over here. So we can join the risk-free rate with the market portfolio. So let me call this M, okay? And this line is now called the security market line. And the Janssen's alpha for the stock A is essentially the vertical distance between A and a similar investment opportunity that lies on the security market line and that has the same um, level of systematic risk as this stock, right? So this is the Janssen's alpha for stock A. In this case, this is positive because essentially the stock A has generated a return in addition to what is expected by the security market line, okay? Or but you can think of it as CAPM as well. So if, for example, we had another stock over here, B, this would have a negative alpha. Why? Because we would look for uh, an opportunity that lies on the SML that has the same beta as B. And you can see that now the vertical distance, so alpha B, is negative. Okay. So how do we co compute alpha A or alpha B? So we basically need the expected return using the CAPM equation because security market line represents the CAPM equation. So for example, let's focus on A. So for A, the expected return according to CAPM is the risk-free rate plus the beta of A times the market risk premium, right? So I'm gonna write now based on realized returns. So let's say the market generated a oops, return of RM. So this is the return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So this is the expected return uh, return of A, or what should have been realized based on the realized market return and the uh, beat of A. So we subtract this from what the stock actually yielded. And this difference gives you the Janssen's alpha. So if the stock performed exactly as expected, alpha would have been zero, okay? So here it's going to be positive because essentially this has generated more return than what was expected. And similarly, alpha B is the return of B minus what the stock was supposed to generate. And that will depend on the beta of uh, stock B again times the market risk premium. And in this case, this is negative because B lies below the security market line, okay? So one final example, we still have the same stock, right? 14.8. So this is what it generated. Now from this, I will subtract what it was supposed to generate. So based on CAPM, so let's say we start with the risk-free rate, which is again 2.5% plus the beta which we already used as 1.35 times the market risk premium. So the market generated 11.24% return over this period minus 2.5%. And you guessed it, we've got a calculator for that as well. So we have all the necessary inputs. So 14.8% market return, risk-free rate of return, the beat of the stock. And if we do that, if we put all these things, oops, sorry, if we, oops, if we put all of those in, we find the Janssen's alpha as alpha percent, essentially. Okay. So it did slightly better than um, what was expected given its beta. 
And you can also look at this exercise and solve it yourself. Again, the solution is in the um, same page as the Janssen's Alpha Calculator, and all the links are in the video description. So feel free to check them out. So, so let's summarize what we have learned in this tutorial. Essentially, we have talked about three different uh, portfolio measures, and these are all what's called risk-adjusted portfolio uh, performance measures. We began with the sharp ratio. So for stock A, sharp ratio essentially is the slope of this line where the measure of risk is total risk. So the volatility of returns or standard deviation of returns. Okay. Trainer ratio was very similar, but instead of focusing on the asset's total risk, we focused on its systematic risk only. And again, this is the slope of this line, gives the trainer ratio. So let's call this TA. Let's call this sharp A, sharp SA, so sharp ratio of A. And finally, Jensen's alpha was essentially derived using security market line, where we have the market portfolio, and market portfolio has a beta of one. So in this case, this is M. The Jensen's alpha is this vertical distance between um, the stock's return and the return it should have generated based on its degree of systematic risk. Okay, so this is all I want to cover in this tutorial. Hope you found it useful and uh, looking forward to see you in another video. Bye for now.